Hi, Dr. Khanna, your keratoconus surgeon here. Today we are going to talk about intact implantable corneal ring segments. We know keratoconus disease leads to the progression of or protrusion of cornea forward and downwards. It's almost like if somebody had a beer belly and the navel or belly button starts pointing downwards. And we know for good sight, we need to be seeing through the center. That's akin to bringing the belly button up. So if you've ever seen somebody with a belly button tie a nice tight belt, uh, it does come up. So the same concept is applied to the cornea where the central part of the cornea, which is best suited to transmit light to the macula, gets pushed forward and down, has to be brought up back by uh, plastic segments. Now these ring segments can be placed depending on exactly where the cone is and the type of astigmatism being displayed. Just as a general rule, if there is symmetric astigmatism, then two ring segments, one superiorly and one inferiorly, are best implanted. And if it's just an inferior cone, a single segment might do. In asymmetric astigmatism, combination of a thin and thin segment would work. So that brings us to what are the kind of segments. So we have different kinds of segments depending on how thick they are, right from 210 to 300, 350, 400, and 450 microns. Now, how are they implanted? Previously, we used to do with the prolate method, which is a mechanical blade method where a channel was made and intax was implanted. The disadvantage of this method is the entry is oblique and the uh, entry also allows an exit. Nowadays, we resort to laser channels, so where a femtosecond laser does an L-shaped entry. So vertical cut and horizontal channel, so the intacts cannot slip out backwards. Second advantage of using laser to make these channels is we can do it at a more precise depth. When we were doing with mechanical method, we had to aim at 75% because it could be 10% less, 10% more. With laser, we aim almost to 90% depth because it's so precise. The deeper we are, the bigger the uh, intact segment, that means the thicker it is, and the deeper we are, more effect is obtained. And because we are in a precise depth, there's less chance of also erosion. In mechanical method, if we aimed for 75% and landed at 50%, uh, it could erode through the surface. This becomes even more important when it, we are dealing with post-lasic ectasia because uh, the flap does not give strength to the cornea. And if the segment was to come right under the flap, then it would extrude more easily. So Intax has been around for quite some time. We've been doing it from 2005, and we've got a load of experience. And we can even combine Intax with cross-linking, which can be done sequentially or at the same setting. Usually, uh, when we first see a kid or a teenager who's having progressive keratoconus, it's better to do cross-linking and followed by Intax, but people who are in their 20s and 30s need good vision. So Intax provides better vision by decreasing the higher order abrasion. So there we can do Intax followed by cross-linking or both at the same setting. So once you come in, we'll be able to take pictures of your eye to see the shape and the thickness distribution to decide which is the best uh, treatment for you and if it's Intax, what kind of Intax and how they will be placed. Thank you.